Hello and welcome back to another video on the Create Mod. Today we are talking about Steam Engines. So Steam Engines are like the latest game power unit and they can produce honestly an astonishing amount of stress units. Today I'm going to be walking you through the most basic small ones as you can see behind me all the way up to the behemoth in the back there, the max 300,000 stress units. Uh, but before we get too far, let's talk about the basic one. So this is a passive boiler. As you can see, it says passive if you look at it with engineering goggles, and it has one size, one water, and one heat. It can be powered by either campfires or an unturned on blaze burner, and you only need one in order for it to be passive. I just have it as four here to show you that you can do this too. It doesn't change the passivity if you add more campfires under it, unfortunately, but this is a pretty early game, like good tester of a boiler just to get a couple of stress units out of it. As you can see here, I have two different designs. The first one over here just uses a water wheel to power the water input here. You can power it with the steam engine itself. However, if it gets overstressed, it is kind of annoying to start back up. And over here, I have the exact same build, but I'm using a windmill instead to power it. The difference between the two, this one is about six by eight or so, and this one is four by four. So this one is quite a bit smaller for the same amount of stress unit generation. Moving on to the first of the actively powered boilers, you can see at the boiler status, it is now level two, which is one above passive and it is already producing about 16,000 more stress units than the passively heated ones. However, there are some drawbacks. As you can see, it does require power, of course. I'm using coal and a chest to power it. You could use anything burnable, so sticks, maybe leaves, like fences, logs, planks, coal, lava, the list goes on, and each one have different blaze burning times with it. If you'll see here, I'm using four blaze burners and hovering over the boiler, it says heat with four green bars. The size and water both have red bars, which means we're not giving it enough water or enough size to reach its max heating potential here. There are either two fixes to this. One, make it bigger like I do over there, which we'll get to in a minute, or we can reduce the amount of blaze burners, which means you'll spend less fuel and you're still getting 32,000 stress units, you're just generating less heat. These are both made in similar ways. Again, we're just using two water wheels over here to power the mechanical arm and the mechanical pump. And the same thing is happening over here, but we're using a windmill instead of water wheels. In general, I wouldn't really recommend building either of these because if you're gonna go with an active source, you're probably already automating either coal or lava or wood or something else. So there's no need to just have two blaze burners and you should probably just go to what I'll talk about next, which is the four tall boilers. Level four, they have four size, four water and four heat. They produce double the stress units to the level two boilers. They are running four blaze burners and it is four by two by two. This is the largest that you can build at this two by two footprint here, because if we build any more, I can show you real quick. You can see that the size is now five, but heat and water are both less than that. And since you're in a two by two space, you can't add another blaze burner underneath. As for my recommendations for this size boiler, I actually think this one is pretty feasible. It isn't massive. It produces 65,000 stress units, which is plenty for like early mid game of the create mod. And even if you have a fully automated source, you're at least using all of the level four capabilities of a two by two area. And it does take up a ton less space than the level nine boilers, which we'll talk about in a second. Now we're on to the level nine boilers. This is the max level boiler you can get without turning these bad boys blue, which we'll get into. And this is really probably the one I would recommend. You can power blaze burners, as you can see, with lava, coal, anything that burns. And up at the top there, you can see that there is 655 seconds left. That is because I am powering it with lava. We have a lot, like an infinite lava generator here, and it produces buckets, which get put into 
the blaze burners, and it gives us 147,000 stress units. The boiler on the other side here is a self-sustaining one, so it doesn't require any water wheels or windmills or anything like that. You just, to start it, have to pull a hand crank, and it generates power for you. This design was made by a member in the community called Seer Zero. It's a really brilliant design. It fits in a 6x6x7. I just shrunk it a little bit to be in a 6x6x6, by six by six, but I'm going to be honest, I really liked his design, and I didn't think I could improve on the manual one crank starts it up aspect of it. So I would definitely check out his channel. It will be in the description down below. As you may have noticed, this one says it's generating 3,000 less stress units than the one over here with the same stats. It still generates 147,000 stress units, but about 3,000 get used up by the mechanical arm, the mechanical pump, and this mechanical pump pumping the lava. But to talk about mine a little bit, you can see that it has very similar properties, but in the back here, it is being powered by water wheels. This makes it so that no matter what, nothing will ever break. If somehow we don't get enough lava to these blaze burners, it will go down and maybe overstress the system but it will start back up once it gets back up to max heat. So it's pretty much unbreakable. The final boiler is this. It is a max size boiler. It is huge. It produces almost 300,000 stress units. As you can see, it requires two max speed pumps and we are feeding it with blaze cakes. The reason I'm not building a tutorial on this is because in the create mod specifically, you cannot really automate blaze cakes very easily and you would need an infinite lava source and it would just get huge but in other mods if you have them it just requires a blaze cake base and lava a blaze cake base is some netherrack sugar and eggs so it is really easy if you have some additional mo mods in there and it generates almost maybe exactly double the level nine burner and it is very menacing and cool looking so I'll give it that. To move back to kind of the main focus of the tutorial, we are going to be building this nine sized boiler. And yeah, let's get into it. Just for your convenience, the material list is going to be in the description down below. I'll also have timestamps to everything that you need, but let's get started. I'm going to be building this with the boiler in this corner here, the front left corner. So that will be my orientation. You can always switch it around if you want but it might get a little bit confusing. Also, this size that we're working from is a six, one, two, three, four, five, six by eight. And it's gonna be six blocks tall. This bottom floor we are gonna to use to put stairs and stuff. So just make sure that you can do that in whatever place you're building it. To start, we are going to be putting the blaze burners down, nine of them total in this front left corner. And then we're going to be punching out some holes here and placing stairs here and here. Then you're going to need to fill these up with water so that you create an infinite source here. Just to pause real quick, you can see in the video that I have a stair right here. Please do not add it. This was a mistake while I was building. I removed it later. Do not add a stair here. Then we're going to place a water pump here facing upward like so and, a, and another pipe right above it. This is going to lead directly into our fuel tanks that are going to be placed here in a little bit. Next, we are going to get started on the water wheels from the very back right corner. Go diagonally in a block and then to the left, one more block so, and then put a cog in the ground like this. So it should be three or four from the right, one from the back like this. Next to it, we're going to place a mechanical pump facing towards the burner like this. And then we're gonna place a pipe on either side of it like this. Now we can get into the water wheel placement. We're gonna break these four blocks in the corner and replace them with stairs. Then fill them up with water like this so that they're all water sources. Then place the water wheels like this so that they can flow this way. Now we're gonna place in the stairs. These are a little bit tricky. So just try to follow along. We need this stair to be in this orientation so that when we connect another stair to it, it's a right angle. Then place another stair here and then we have to repeat the same pattern over here. So it should look like this, right angle stair, downward stair, downward stair, right angle stair. Then if you fill all of these with water, 
they should flow directly into the stairs down here and not go anywhere else. If you don't fill up these stairs, the water will flow elsewhere. And if you don't make these right angle stairs, the water will flow out. So make sure this is exactly like I show. Then we're going to place more water wheels on top of this. These should be spinning from the water sources in these stair blocks. And now we can combine these two together. But first, let's put a shaft here to connect to this cog wheel there. And then a normal gearbox here like this. And then a vertical gearbox like this. We'll get to that in a second. But now we can combine these two. If you put two vertical gearboxes like that and a shaft in between. We then have to put a rotation speed controller here set to 180 RPM. This can be counterclockwise or clockwise. It shouldn't matter. And then a cog wheel on top with a vertical gearbox and a shaft connecting these two. And if you want, you can cover it with andesite casing just so it looks a little bit nicer. And then along the ground here, we're going to place shafts like this, and then another vertical gearbox here. And then we're going to place a cog wheel here. We will eventually place another cog wheel here, but don't do it because it'll start spewing a bunch of water everywhere and you don't want that. So moving on to now the pipe layout, we're going to place a pipe here and here, right click both of these so they're glass, and then we can fill in the rest of the pipes. So two wide pipe row here so that you leave a one block space. And then once you get to here, we can place pipes on top of everything like this. So three wide and then connect this pipe, connect these and go all the way to here. So it should look something like this. Then we're going to place our cauldrons down. Just place them on top of the pipes like this. You should have 14 being placed in total. Next, we're going to move on to the lava refill system. On this block here, we're going to place a chute and make sure it's filtered to lava buckets only. On top of that, we're going to place a depot. Into the depot, we're going to place a hopper. And then we're going to place another chute with normal buckets. On top of this depot, we're going to place oh, a spout like this. So it should be one block above. And then we're going to connect this pipe to the spout like so. Now we can finally connect the mechanical arm. So what you're going to do is right click all of these blaze burners so that they're all yellow. And then right click this so it is also yellow. And then you are going to right click this bottom shoot here so that it is blue. Then you're going to place the mechanical arm here. And you should see at the bottom mechanical arm has one input and 10 outputs. Then we're going to connect a cog wheel here to connect the mechanical arm to the mechanical pump. Now we can get started on putting in the actual fluid tanks. So we just need to build a three by three square on top of the blaze burners like this, and it should connect into a bigger fluid container. Then you just place three more fluid containers so that the capacity is 280,000 and it is four blocks tall. Now we can put the steam engines in. We're going to need nine in total. So if you place them all along the way like this and then put shafts so that they are facing horizontally like this. And we're just going to do that all the way down like so. And for some reason, my like thing is a little bit glitchy, but this should look normal for you. Next, we can put down the blocks and the dripstone to have the lava drip into these cauldrons down below. So on top of every cauldron, you're going to place a block, one block with a one block gap here like this. And you're just going to build it along like this and route it the whole way this way. Then what you can do is place the dripstone just along the way like this and make sure that all of the spots are covered. So even though it's like dripping water like this, this is just a visual effect. And since there's no water on top of it, these cauldrons won't get filled up. So don't worry about that. Next, we can place the remaining surrounding blocks around this section here. And this just prevents the lava from flowing outward at all. And once you've done this, be sure to place one more block here. Otherwise, lava will flow down this way. These shafts block any lava from flowing. So if you see here, it will not flow down the side like that. So once you've placed the block here, you can now fill in the rest of this with lava source blocks. 
and this should be a flat lava pool like this. And now the only thing we need to do is throw some empty buckets in this chute. So if you just grab a stack, toss it in there, you should now see the depot, if we hover over it, has one bucket available, the hopper has 14, and this has one lava bucket inside of it. Now what we have to do is just wait until a couple of these cauldrons fill up. To speed it along, you can throw in some lava buckets there, but once you have like nine or so cauldrons filled up, we can start the machine. In order to do this, all you have to do is connect the cogwheels and the mechanical pump together. So placing that there, then the mechanical pump should start pumping water. The water should be at the max level nine, as you see here. And the mechanical arm should be moving and filling in all of these blaze burners. Once it gets up to level nine and you're producing 147,000 stress units, then you'll know that it actually works successfully. The very final piece of the puzzle is combining all of these shafts together. The way to do this is just to throw in a belt like this. And if we then connect something here and let's just get a stressometer and we put that here, you can see somewhere. Oh, it's broken. We, we see 140,000 stress units remaining, which is exactly what we wanted. And it's all in one convenient shaft right here. And that is it for the steam engine guide and unbreakable steam engine tutorial. I hope you liked this video and I hope this is useful in your create mod world. Uh, definitely let me know down in the comment section if this was helpful and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.